Hey internet, welcome to this update video for Measure at Arc. Let's check it out. Alright, so you can find the Measure at Arc version 3 release notes up on GitHub. There'll be a link in the description. And up there you can find documentation for how to install the add-on and the application template as well as release notes on all of the tools and the download links down here at the bottom. So once you've got everything installed, let's go ahead and open up a new Measure at Arc file. And you can see right away that the main toolbar is pretty much the same, and we'll talk about the new dimension type in a second. But you can see that the settings in the user interface here look a little bit different, both for the style settings and for the object specific settings. And rather than the old sort of expand and collapse uh, individual items interface, I've redesigned it to be a list style uh, interface, similar to what you see in the vertex groups and the shape keys in Blender. And what that means is that it takes up a little less space. So you can see you've got the settings down here below, and those settings will update to reflect whichever item is currently selected in the list. You've also got the add button up here in the corner to add a new style, the delete button below it, to delete a style, and down here in the little chevron drop-down menu you've got an option to delete all of the styles. But we won't do that right now, instead let's come over and show our measure at arg items, and you can see our cube with some basic line work. And if we go ahead and select our cube, you can see the first new feature. In the old version of the add-on, it was really difficult to tell which object was selected because the line work was drawing over top of Blender's selection. But now the selected object's color gets overridden with the theme's selection color. So it's nice and easy to tell which object you've got selected or active. Let's go ahead and delete this extra cube here, and let's take a look at the new dimension type that we've added, which is axis dimensions. Uh, this is a pretty standard type of dimension where you're just going to take a measurement along one axis of the 3D space. So let's go ahead and add an axis dimension here, and we're going to measure along the Y axis on this side of the cube. So let's go select those vertices, and we can choose which axis we'd like to measure along here. So we'll set that to Y. We're going to leave the dimension style as it is for now, and we're going to set the view plane to XY, and we'll add in that dimension. And you can see that even as I rotate this cube, no matter how I rotate it, it's only going to measure along that Y component. Now, one thing that's interesting about axis dimensions right now is if we come into the settings here, that view plane right now is telling it to only draw on the XY plane in plan view. But axis dimensions are a little bit smarter than that, so if we go ahead and set that view plane to none, and then come down to a side view, we can see that the dimension snaps up to try and stay in our view. So if we go ahead and hop between left view and top view, you can see that it always stays locked to how we're looking. Unfortunately right now if we do go to the right view uh, the dimension does show up backwards but we can always go ahead and fix that with our text flip options down here in the dimension settings. Alright so for the next feature we're going to take a look at the title sequence file that played at the beginning of this video and you can see that we've got a rectangle here in the center of the scene with some line work dimensions and annotations on it that have some of their properties animated so that things kind of fade in and pop into place here as the animation plays. And what I want to take a look at is the render setup. So in the old version of Measure at Arc we had an option to render animations but it didn't work particularly well. Uh, and so that's been overhauled. So now we have this Measure at Arc image and Measure at Arc animation render buttons as well as an option to save render to output. That really just applies to the image if you want it to save automatically after rendering the image and that's just going to save it to your output path here. So the old version of the animation rendering in Measure at Arc would kind of freeze up Blender, you wouldn't be able to see any progress in how things were going along, but now we'll see if we go ahead and click the Measure at Arc animation button here, you can see that the timeline starts to play along in the bottom, and that's just showing which frame is currently being rendered as it moves through. And I'll just speed this up so you can see it stepping through the entire animation. And the other thing that's been added is that you can now cancel this render at any time by hitting the escape button or uh, right clicking in the 3D view here. That will stop your render and give you control back over the scene. So once we've got those measure at arc frames rendered, 
we can go ahead into the compositing view here and you can see uh, I've already got this set up but what you do would be just to load in that image sequence from wherever you rendered it to and it'll be labeled MIT underscore frame with your frame numbers and you can go ahead and load that image sequence in and you can see that sort of play through in the compositor here as we just scrub through the frames and you'll want to set that to alpha over with your render layer with convert pre multiplied enabled and now when we go ahead and render our animation you can see that those measure at arc frames are being composited over top of the rendered image and I'll just go ahead and speed this up too so that you can see the whole thing play through all right and for the last couple features we're gonna take a look at uh, a bit of a work in progress project that I've got going just to demonstrate a few things and one thing that had been pointed out in the last version was that the dimensions kind of started to go all over the place when modifiers got involved with the objects but we can see if I just go ahead and drag this cutting cube down, which is doing a boolean cut through all of these objects, uh, that the dimensions are staying nice and steady even as the boolean cuts through the various objects of the scene. And we can see that even as I sort of start to move this cube around and cut through various parts of the object, the dimensions don't seem to have a problem with that. And you can see that even if I cut through the entirety of the objects that have the boolean modifiers on them, the dimensions stay locked in place. And this isn't always an ideal behavior, but in this case it's much better than the dimensions jumping all over the place like they used to. And this is so much more stable because rather than trying to use the object that's resulting after all of the modifiers have been evaluated, Measure at Arc is getting its vertex points directly from the original mesh before any of the modifiers get applied. And this works quite well for keeping things steady for Boolean modifiers, but there are some cases where you would want to have modifiers being evaluated. So I've tried to differentiate between uh, the modifiers that Measure at Arc systems work well with and the ones that it doesn't. So most of these deform modifiers, because they aren't adding or removing any vertices from the object, work fairly well with Measure at Arc. So you can see if I add a displace, um, I can adjust that and the line work and dimension handle it fairly well and those will be evaluated by default. But you can see if I go ahead and add a boolean modifier, it recognizes that you know, the vertices might be changing in ways that are unexpected and might not handle that well, so it stops evaluating the modifier stack. If you are in a situation where you do want to attempt to evaluate the whole modifier stack, even if you've got some generative modifiers in place there, there is an option in the Measure at Arc settings in the Scene tab here to evaluate all modifiers, but as you can see, it does lead to some unexpected results and things will kind of jump around on you a little bit. All right, and one of the last big changes I want to talk about is that Measure at Arc now supports instancing. So you can see uh, these two door models are actually collection instances from a separate scene in the blend file. And you can see that even the line work on this door is being instanced into our main scene. And we can go ahead and add as many instances of that door with the door swing as we like. So if we just come over to a new demo scene here, we can show you how everything's working with the instancing. Uh, we've got two cubes here, both in a collection called cube. And we've got one with an aligned dimension here, an axis dimension spanning between the two of them, and this cube over here has an annotation attached to it. So if we go ahead and make an instance of our cube collection, you can see that the line work and the annotations are instancing, but the dimensions are not. And that's because I haven't quite got all of the kinks worked out of the dimension instancing so far. If we go ahead and hop over to the Scene tab here, we can enable instancing for dimensions. And we'll just go ahead and show you what some of the problems are right now. So you see, as long as we don't scale or rotate this instance, uh, everything looks fine. If we do go ahead and rotate this, you can see that rotating the instance doesn't quite behave the way you'd want it to. Um, and same thing with scaling. Uh, the dimension text is, is not updating the way it should. Uh, so I've still got some work to do there, but it is a work in progress. So if you're not planning on rotating or scaling your instances and you do want dimensions to come along with them, um, that option is there for you. But because I haven't quite got all the bugs worked out, uh, it is disabled by default.
All right, so that about wraps it up for this round of updates. Um, before I go, I just want to say a huge thanks to everybody who's been trying out the software reporting issues on GitHub, and I especially want to give a shout out to Blunderbug on GitHub, uh, who really helped out after the first release, um, getting things working on the Mac version and recording these amazing issue videos whenever there was a bug, that kind of stuff really just makes it so much easier to, to find the issues and start to fix things, so I really appreciate that. Thanks so much. This is still very much an active work in progress, so for the next version I'll be trying to work out something to get those modifiers working a little more reliably, and I'm trying to come up with a system uh, similar to the way SketchUp handles dimension text where it always stays readable in the current view so that you don't have to deal with toggling those flip dimension text. Um, settings down in the dimension properties. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to automate that in the future. So if you're interested, uh, stay tuned to this channel. I'll be posting more updates soon, and thanks so much for watching. Bye!